you can tell us on his condition? Uh, well, first off, I'd like to say that um, my dad is actually here with us in the room during this interview, which he, you know, he really enjoys. He wanted to get the point across to where uh, he thanks everybody everywhere around the world from the amazing comments and get well soon quotes. Um, he really loves them and he really appreciates everybody's uh, concern. Um, he's doing amazing considering, and it's just, it, it's been a long week, but you know, I'm glad we're here at this point. I wish it was under better circumstances, but I mean, it is what it is. Well, indeed, let me just say to Thomas Sr., we're so sad, Thomas, because, of course, you were meant to be in the air right now, joining us in London tomorrow for a very special week at the Platinum Jubilee. But, Thomas, you will get on that plane. Might just take you a few more months. And, Thomas Michael Jr., I believe your dad has a message to the Queen as well. Yeah, Dad wanted to say that um, he was very, very much looking forward to attending the 70th Jubilee uh, celebration. He really wanted to be there. Um, he sends the Queen's he sends the Queen's his best regards and and but he will be there soon. He will be there at a future date and maybe then maybe then they can have their their meeting. Oh, we're going to hold you to it, Thomas. The plane ticket is just on hold, OK? It's just on hold. It's not cancelled. We're going to bring you to London uh, come hell or high water. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, Thomas, there are a couple of things I wanted to pick up on because the Sunday Mirror front page at the weekend claimed that your sister, Megan, had been in touch with your dad and was intending to reconcile but wanted to cut both you and Thomas's other daughter, Samantha Markle, out of the picture. Is, is that true at all? Well, let, let me uh, be very clear on what I say next. Um, this actually happened prior to their wedding. Um, probably caused my dad some, some problems there as well. But Megan had contacted my father saying if he wanted to come to the wedding, that he had to disown myself and my sister, Samantha. So maybe that still applies to her, or maybe that's what she's still thinking, but that's, that's definitely what happened. Um, and to answer your question, Dan, um, she made no attempt whatsoever at all to contact my father. I've been with my dad the whole week. She still has the same phone number she's had forever. My dad still has the same phone number. She could have called. She could have texted. So, yes, it's a completely fabricated story about she tried to contact and reach out. Do you think this is about publicity, Thomas, to try and make it look better for Megan, given that she's done this quite crude publicity stunt by flying halfway across America uh, to visit the scene of, of the mass shooting in Texas? And this week she's planning to still visit the UK for the Platinum Jubilee, despite not seeing your dad? Does it just feel like this is publicity? She's wanting people to think that she's trying to solve things with your father? I honestly don't know what Megan's agenda is. I'm just telling you from my standpoint of view, it's totally wrong what she's done. It's, it's, it's just, um, it's the most insensitive inconsiderable thing I've ever seen in my life. She went there three days prior or whatever. I mean, she, she, she's had every opportunity and it probably most likely was a PR stunt judging by the cameras there and the little walk she did, like she was on a stage and it, it just didn't make any sense. It's she, she, if she wanted to reach out to my father, she's had every opportunity. And, and as far as a PR, PR stunt goes, maybe this, her saying that she tried to reach out is trying to make herself look better. I mean, she's got to pay her PR team ridiculous amounts of money to do this. So she has to give them content. Somebody has got to be telling these people what to do and what to print. And Thomas, she is literally about a three or four hour drive away. I mean, it's closer for her to get to you and, and your dad than it was for her to get to Texas. So practically, there's nothing stopping her. Yeah. Not only is it three or four hours away, it's, it's, I mean, it's like how many days late? I mean, she did tell you, it's just, it's just, you know, 
no comment. It's just, my God, I mean, she just, she just needs to figure out who she is as a person. And if she's showing the world who she is right now as a person, she's doing a really good job of it. Indeed. And it's heartbreaking for me, uh, Thomas, because I was going through your sister's blog, you know, the blog, the TIG that she had before she met Prince Harry. And she wrote a lot about your dad and, and it was all positive. But I was particularly struck by a post that she made about your dad on Father's Day 2014. And these are her words written on her blog. And she said, my dad taught me to find my light. To my dad, my thoughtful, inspiring, hardworking daddy, happy Father's Day. If I had all the water in the world, I'd give all the water to you. You won't get that quote, but he will. And for Father's Day, that's all that matters. So, Thomas, she adored your father. She publicly praised your father. And she won't be with him at his hour of need. Yeah. I mean, you talk about the question mark for the entire world to figure out. It's 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 a mystery still to this day. Um, you know, we can embellish on the fact that money has changed her. Uh, fame has changed her. I mean, I mean, it's still a mystery. It's, it's really sad, though. I mean, even, no matter no matter what happens in your family, you only have one family and they're the only ones who are true for you when you need them. And. That's why I'm here, because my dad needs me. And that's why I came down here immediately from, you know, I, I left the day before that to go to Oregon to help my son launch his new launch his new business. And I turned around and came right back. I mean, there's just no question mark whatsoever. Exactly. I mean, because that's what children do. That is what yeah, kids do. That's what um, family does. Yeah. Because you don't have anybody else, there is nobody else who is going to care and be there as much as family would. Uh, Thomas, I wanted to ask you about these vile individuals who refer to themselves as the Sussex squad, because they were posting some of the most revolting things about your father uh, and his trip to London with GB News. Some of them even featured me uh, in the days and the weeks before his stroke. Uh, do, do, do you think all of this trolling made any difference to Thomas's health? Well, I'm gonna tell you, Dan, I was here, uh, like I said, the day before I left and I came over to my dad's house cause I have a, I have a place three doors down as well. Um, and I was concerned because I was looking at my Instagram. I have an Instagram page since I started uh, when, when I went on Big Brother VIP in Australia. It's called The Real Thomas Markle Jr. And I get so many horrific threats from the Sussex squad and, and a few others, which are just like, I don't even pick on Megan on my, on my Instagram page at all, ever. But when I see this stuff, it, it, it's just crazy. And then, so I come to my dad's house and start going through it. And I look on YouTube and my God, I see the, the, the Sussex squad and, and the Royal Sussex page on YouTube and the things they post. And that's where I found that disgusting video making fun of my father just because he's going to the Jubilee. I mean, and if you look on the Royal Sussex page on YouTube, you're going to see exactly whose it is. It's definitely Meghan Markle. And, and if it's not her personally, she's definitely paying somebody to do it. And it's just do you wrong. think she's involved? I absolutely. I mean, somebody somebody's footing the bill for this. OK, and we obviously haven't seen evidence of, of that, but it, that is a <laughs> that is a one theory. I, I don't I don't have 100 percent proof. I'm um, just saying Tom, somebody. Yeah. Th Thomas, can I can I just ask you, you're obviously uh, your father's voice for the moment, because Thomas very sadly has lost his speech. Uh, we know he'll get it back. It's going to be a long road. There's going to be a lot of physical therapy, a lot of speech therapy. But as it stands, you are his voice uh, on planet Earth right now. Can I just get you to speak directly to your sister, Megan, and say what you would like her to know and what you would like her to do for your dad? 
Well, at this point, I, you know, it, it's it's kind of hard. I mean, um, that's one question that me and my dad did not go over prior to this interview. I, I would say that, I mean, a day late and a dollar short times 10, maybe, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what she can do at this point if it's going to mean anything, if she actually tries to reconcile with my dad or reach out. Um, I don't know. It, that, that's a good question, Dan. Um, I would just like to say to Meg, I guess myself, um, you know, stop, stop the vicious PR attack. Um, you know, I, I mean, if you want to show some love and support for my dad, I mean, you know, s- s- I mean, step in and definitely do some support. I mean, we've got a long road ahead of us right now. Definitely a long road ahead of us. And I'm going to be here for the duration. So if you want to show your support in any way whatsoever, I mean, you know, instead of throwing money at your PR crew or your photography crew, throw some money towards the medical bills. You know, we'll probably need help with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Thomas Markle Jr., do send our love to Thomas Sr. We're going to miss him this week, but he will be in our thoughts and in our prayers. And do keep in touch, Thomas. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Dan. My dad just gave a thumbs up and a little a little applaud. He really appreciates it. And he's really looking forward to uh, a speedy recovery. He's doing amazing, by the way. I mean, amazing considering. It's just incredible.